This is the Lakeville North PantherCast with head football coach Mike Swaver. Welcome to week six of PantherCast. We come to you today after a disappointing 35-7 loss at the hands of the Rosemont Irish. A lot of credit has to go to the Rosemont players and their coaching staff for putting together a great game plan against us. They controlled the ball on the ground and in the air throughout the game and and were able to put some points on the board. And they took away our running game and um, they also had some good plays on special teams. So um, it was a disappointing loss for us, as I said, but it's something that we have to bounce back from. Uh, The loss moves us to four and two overall and uh, with two more games to go in the conference. And so we have to play well in the final two games so that we can uh, get a good position in our section playoff games and move forward, um, which is the goals that the kids have, have put forth for the year. Now let's take a look at some of the key plays from the game on Friday night. Football is a game of momentum, and Rosemont got the ball on the opening kickoff, and our defense came up with what we thought was a big-time play. If you see on this play, uh, we're blitzing off of the outside edge. Ben Freitag comes in as the, uh, Rosemont's quarterback drops back to pass. He hits him, and it looks like the ball's out. Jamie Klontz picks it up and looks like he'll have um, a long touchdown run, which would have put us, put us up 7 nothing in the first drive of the game. Unfortunately, the officials ruled it that uh, the Rosemont's quarterback's hand was coming forward, an incomplete pass, and... Um, ball went back to Rosemont. They ended up converting on this series and putting them up 7-0. So that's a 14-point swing right off the bat. The second key play of the game came on the first series of the second half. We were already down 28 nothing at the time and we knew that we needed to put some points on the board coming out of halftime in order to get back into this football game. Rosemont had stopped us on a third down but we decided to go for a fake punt. Everything was set up pretty well for us um, and Chase Heichel passed over to the left hand side to Fred Newell and he made an amazing effort diving for the sticks looks like he had the first down which would have kept our drive alive unfortunately he was ruled that his toe had touched out of bounds two yards earlier and it took a lot of wind out of our sails putting the defense back on the field at that point in time our third key play of the game came on uh, our first series of the fourth quarter. Uh, we went to a no-huddle offense at this time, and you can see our big-time wide receiver, number one, Tyler Swanson, finds a hole in the middle of the field on a big third down, makes a catch, moves the ball upfield for us, and um, allows our offense to keep moving the ball a little bit and keep our defense off the field. Two plays later, quarterback number 10, Mike Hartwell, finds senior wide receiver Bryant McCudden on a post pattern. Down the middle of the field, Bryant makes a great catch for a touchdown, gets our first points on the board at that point in time. And now it's time for our Panthers of the Week. On the offensive side of the ball, we pick senior wide receiver number seven, Willie Washington. Will's had a great year for us as a, as a catching wide receiver. He's made some big time catches and had a lot of touchdown catches over the year. You can see on this pass pattern, um, he picks up some good yards on a crossing pattern over the middle of the field. But the real reason why we picked Will Washington as Panther of the Week on the offensive side of the ball this week is because he really stepped up his game from a blocking standpoint. And you can see him on this play make a great crack back block on an outside linebacker. On the defensive side of the ball, the Panther of the Week honors go to senior defensive tackle number 46, Harry Bernier. Although Rosemont did a nice job controlling the ball on the ground throughout the game, Harry stayed active the whole time. He has a motor that doesn't quit, and he ended up getting in on a lot of plays. And our special teams Panther of the Week goes to junior long snapper number 54, Zach Brown. Sometimes your long snapper only gets recognized when they have a bad snap, but Zach's been consistent throughout the entire year, and so therefore we want to give this week's Panther of the Week to our long snapper, Zach Brown. Up next for us is the Eastview Lightning. Eastview will come into the game with a record of 4-2, just like we have at this point. They're a tough, physical football team, and they'll be ready to play Friday night. They just came off a a tight victory versus the Chaska Hawks, which they won in overtime by converting on a two-point conversion. I know they'll be ready to play against us. We'll have to match their intensity. We're going over to their place, and we're excited for this game because it's important. Both of these last two games are going to be important for us as we try to position ourselves getting ready for the playoffs. Thanks for watching this week's edition of PantherCast. We look forward to seeing you back here again next week.